Hey guys, just wanted to take a few minutes to say a very happy Christmas to you all from our family tree to yours. Although if we men are honest, we didn't have much to do with putting up any trees or decks, did we? Thank God for the women in our lives or there'd be no Christmas. <laughs> I wanted to just take a few minutes to first of all say thank you to all of you for your time and attention that you've spent in my direction this year with all the interactions that we have had together on social media, any courses of mine that you have taken and invested time and money and attention in, all of the likes and comments and uh, reposts. Uh, thank you for all of that in a year when everybody's been vying for our time and attention, I'm so grateful for you guys tracking with me in this journey together this year. Thank you. As I reflect back on 2020, as I guess we are all doing at this time, what a year. There has been no script and there has been no precedent and no GPS for this year. So don't give yourself a hard time if you don't think you did it well, because you did. You are here, you survived, and you did better than you think you did. So well done. This year made me realize, I think, afresh, um, a number of things. In this pandemic has been hidden a number of serendipitous gifts. I think when serendipitous gifts are hidden in something as ugly as a pandemic, we judge the gift by its wrapping, which is ugly and pleasant, so we leave it untouched and never open it. And I'm afraid that millions of us will have not have opened the gifts of the pandemic because we saw no value in it. And I'm not saying that at all, to underestimate or be casual about any suffering um, any of us have gone through in this 2020 pandemic year. I was thinking as I got ready to talk to you on this video about the first Christmas when Jesus was born, the world at that time, if you recall, or maybe you've never heard this thought, the world when Jesus was born was in its own pandemic size event. Rome decided to have a census, which they did every uh, you know, decade or so, and everybody had to go back to their place of origin, their land of birth, their place of birth, their town of birth, which is why Mary and Joseph ended up in Bethlehem. So the whole world on the day Jesus was born was experiencing its own lockdown, its own massive disruption, its own enforced travel on them and inconvenience and cost. Just imagine if seven and a half billion of us in the world had to all go back to our places of birth. What a massive global upheaval that would be for years to come. So this year has been our own year, I suppose, of that. And I felt like the people must have felt on the day Jesus was born, I felt caught up in a global shared consciousness because we've all been touched by this thing in a way that we have never been in our lifetimes. This has gone wall to wall, north to south, east to west. There has been no one left untouched by the effects of the pandemic, the imposition, the disruption, the tragedy of it. I think when we go through seasons, moments, events of global consciousness, especially ones this large, we have this sense of um, unity in our humanity that is uncommon rare in fact in any of our lifetimes to the degree we've had it in 2020. It was so massive in Jesus's time that the clock of history was zeroed. We are 2020 years on from the year zero that Jesus arrived in the world. We went from BC to AD in that, in that event of global consciousness that zeroed the clock, get everybody a fresh start is what his arrival in the world did. As I look back on 2020 and this ground zero year from which we are all gonna start again next year, it will be a year where we feel it was like a separation like BCAD, where we'll have had a pre-COVID world and a post-COVID world, similar but to a greater degree than 9-11. And I don't want to move into 2021 without making sure that 2020 pays up that it gives me everything it owes me, that it yields its secrets, that it hands over its seeds that were hidden inside its sorrows, 
that I get its gifts that were wrapped in ugly wrapping that were too plain for me to see value in at first glance. One of those gifts has been the gifts of stillness. I know we were all grounded through lockdowns, but within that grounding were gifts, if you framed it that way. And stillness has been a huge blessing to me this year. The stillness in 2020 felt like an invitation from God, from the universe, from something divine, from something bigger than all of us. I felt stillness was an invitation to come and be still, which suited my introversion, of course. And in that stillness, my creativity has flourished, my reinvention has flourished. I have reinvented myself again this year to become an online content creator in a, level, in a way and at a level I've never done before. And so I'm proud of my ability to pivot and adapt and chameleon into this now new version of me. And I guess many of you experienced similar things to that. So I enter this year grateful, aware I need so little to make me happy. That's another great discovery of this year. I need so little to make me happy. I'm happy with so little because all the things that we thought made us happy that were taken from us, we realized actually we would mistakenly made them responsible, um, vital to our happiness and we've done brilliant without them. And so you should never go back into that limitation and that need for things that we've learned to live without and live well without and less is more all over again for us. I want to say a very, very happy Christmas to you all as you enter this Christmas season. I wonder if I can encourage you to have a Christmas on purpose and by design rather than by default. I wonder if you could begin now to curate your Christmas playlist, not just the music, but to curate your playlist of energies that you want in the home, conversations, tone, smells, food, environment, dial down the drama and dial up the fun, the playfulness, the laughter. That's what I mean by playlists. To commit to be present this year in a way that you didn't think you could or would want to be because we kind of, I'm done with 2020, I'm glad it's out of it, la 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 to 2020. <laughs> Only if you could commit to be present this Christmas more than ever before, to be there which for an introvert uh, can be a real challenge, I know and as you know, but I've committed to be there, to be present, to enjoy, to savor, to be grateful. I'm grateful for this year. I've decided to be grateful for this year and to make it my servant for years to come, to use it as a stepping stone and a launching pad to better days ahead. I send you love, blessings, prayers, and good energy, and love and light for a great Christmas and for a better 2021, and I'll see you all in the new year. Blessings. Thank you. Love you guys.